Hello, this is Professor Matt Catrullis of Rio Hondo College with the video for Experiment 14 from Chemistry 110 on the subject of the reactions of unsaturated hydrocarbons. Before you begin the experiment or the pre-laboratory exercise, it's very important that you review Chapter 11. And in particular, you'll want to focus on the following topics. Nomenclature of alkenes and alkynes, that is the naming of these compounds cis-trans isomerism, addition reactions, of which we will be performing one addition reaction, and another reaction of a new type that you're not familiar with called an oxidation reaction. So in part A, I will begin by displaying uh, virtual molecular models of compounds that contain double or triple bonds. Once you've looked at each model, you will want to draw condensed structures of these molecules on the report sheet on page 165. I'd like to change the instructions slightly. For cyclobutene, which is one of the molecules you are asked to draw, I strongly prefer that you draw a skeletal structure uh, rather than a condensed structure. It would be very unusual to draw that molecule as a condensed structure. And for the remaining four molecules that you will see, I would strongly ask that you not condense anything on the two carbon atoms on the alkene itself or on the alkyne. So draw out any hydrogens bonded to those carbons uh, in the molecule. And of course, write in the carbon labels themselves. You are more than welcome to condense any alkyl groups so methyls or ethyls that you see bonded to the alkene carbons. If you're asked to draw a cis or a trans isomer, that needs to be totally clear in the drawing that you are showing cis or trans. If you condense the hydrogen atoms, it will not be at all clear whether you have drawn a cis or a trans isomer. And then do your best to approximate the bond angles correctly in your drawings. Now, let me go ahead and show you exactly what I mean uh, in these particular instructions. So let's take a look at some examples of what I was asking for in the previous slide. So let's say you were asked to draw these three molecules, 1-pentene, cis-2-pentene, and trans-2-pentene. This is what a good response would look like for all three molecules going from left to right. So with one pentene, you'll notice that I've got both hydrogen atoms that are bonded to the carbon being expanded. I haven't written them as CH2. You'll also notice that it's pretty clear that we have nice 120 degree angles throughout here. Everything is nice and spread out. This should have five carbons, correct? Pentene. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, it's totally fine to condense uh, all of these hydrogens because they're not really what we're focused on. We're focused instead on the double bond and the groups attached to it. Now, the next molecule I asked for was cis-2-pentene. Cis means that the two hydrogens must be on the same side, so either both on the top or both on the bottom. Also, with this being 2-pentene, the double bond doesn't begin until carbon 2. So here's carbon 1, here's carbon 2, and you can clearly see that the hydrogens are both pointing in the same general direction, meaning up. Uh, by contrast with trans, one of the hydrogens is pointing down and one of them is pointing up. It simply has to be in opposite directions. So again, it's fine to condense the methyl group and the ethyl group, so to speak, but you should not be condensing the groups that are bonded directly to the carbon. Now, let's look at a not so good response. The biggest problem I have with these responses, and these are ones that I commonly see, is that they don't even attempt to accurately represent the bond angles. They've kind of drawn everything here as like 90 degree angles. Now, there is no cis or trans isomer for 1-pentene, 
So these hydrogen spots being drawn up, it's not a problem. Um, this one could have been drawn down and it would still look fairly ugly. In this particular case, the person who's drawn this has tried to show cis by drawing the two hydrogens both up in the same direction, which I appreciate. And they've shied, tried to show trans by drawing the two hydrogens in opposite directions. But again, they're ugly drawings because they don't accurately represent the bond angles. They're drawn as 90 degree angles. So these are much better. And now let's look at a flat out bad response. Someone who paid no attention to the instructions I just requested. So these molecule drawings are all accurate to an extent. The first answer is a perfectly fine answer if you were just asked to draw one pentene, but it's not what I asked for. I asked for these uh, any groups bonded to the carbon to be expanded. So we need that and the same thing here. Now the problem with both of these two structures is, well, compare them. Look at the one on the left in the middle here and look on the one on the right. They're exactly the same. I can't tell if one is cis or one is trans. Um, so this is not acceptable and this would not receive credit um, for the answer. So please take a good look at what we see right here on the top and that's how I would like you to be drawing your alkenes. Parts B and C get into some reactions of alkenes. And these reactions are used to identify alkenes and designate them as different from other types of functional groups. The first reaction we will look at in Part B involves the addition of bromine solution to an alkene. When bromine is added to an alkene, we get an extremely fast addition reaction. And one bromine atom adds to each side of the carbon atom. And that is essentially what it means to have an addition reaction. An atom adds to each side of the double bond. Now bromine liquid, Br2, is red. But the products of a bromination reaction usually are colorless. Now it's important to understand that Br2 being red does not in any way imply that any other compound that contains bromine is also red. It's only pure Br2 which is red. If we add bromine to an alkane or cycloalkane, a saturated compound, it will react but it goes through an entirely different process and gives a totally different kind of a product. Um, and it does this much more slowly than with an alkene. I mean, by much more slowly, meaning it could take a minute or two minutes, but that's much, much slower than what we see with the alkene. Also, incidentally, this reaction can down here with a saturated compound only takes place if there's a light source. If we were to store bromine in an alkane in the dark, a reaction would not occur. Now, it's important to understand this word that uh, is used in the instructions that a lot of students have issues with uh, based on my past experience. Adding bromine to a saturated compound causes the red color to persist. Persist means it stays there, it doesn't go away. Uh, it's like if a person uh, persists. They're generally nagging at you. They're, they're not going away and leaving you alone. So a red color staying or persisting means that we have a negative test result. There is no alkene. A red color fading extremely quickly to colorless is a positive test. In the next part, I will be adding potassium permanganate to an alkene and that oxidizes the alkene to a diol. Uh, there's a couple new words right there. Oxidizes, when we talk about organic chemistry, simply means adds bonds between carbon and oxygen. So we're going to see uh, a diol formed, which means that there is a double alcohol. So where the carbons used to be double bonded to each other, 
each carbon is now going to be bonded to an OH group from an alcohol. Now the alkene itself is likely to be colorless and the diol is usually colorless. However, potassium permanganate itself is very dark violet. And the side product in this reaction, manganese 4 oxide, is brown. So a positive test would indicate that we are forming this brown substance in the liquid. And so that color change is the positive test. You will not see color completely disappear. So if we say that the color persists, the dark violet color stays and persists, that is a negative test result. So here is a summary of the two reactions I just discussed. The R groups, recall, usually mean carbon groups, but in this context, they could mean hydrogen as well. So the R groups stand for carbon or hydrogen groups, and they don't have to be the same. So this could be a CH3, this could be a CH3, this could be a hydrogen, this could be a hydrogen. It's a very general reaction, so we don't have to say what those R's actually stand for. But in any case, when this is added to bromine, the bromines add. There is no additional product over here, so this is a combination type of a reaction. And these products are usually colorless, and they certainly will be in the reaction we look at. An alkene plus potassium permanganate, which is dark violet, gives a diol. As I said, here we have an alcohol and here we have an alcohol, so two alcohols right next to each other. And the manganese compound is transformed from the permanganate ion to manganese 4 oxide. Now those of you who look very, very careful to this might say, Professor Petrullis, this doesn't balance, and you're in fact totally correct. I've left out the potassium ion. There is still a potassium ion floating around in solution, and in addition to that, there must be a negative ion also floating around. So there are other side products in this reaction, but since they don't participate, I've elected to leave them off for this particular slide. Another change in the procedure, and one you'll probably be happy about, is the fact that we are not going to include an unknown in this experiment. Whenever you see a box marked unknown in part B and part C, just leave it blank or draw a nice single line through it. Part D asks you to identify whether the unknown is an alkene or an alkane. And since we are not doing those unknown tests, there's no reason for you to answer Part D. So again, either leave it blank or draw a line through it.
In the test tube on the left, I have the alkene cyclohexene, and I am adding bromine to it. You can see the bromine sliding down the side of the glass, and you can see the red spot that appeared when a drop was spilled on the paper. Notice that the red color disappears instantly. In fact, it's practically impossible to tell that it was ever there. This is cyclohexane, an alkane, and I'm going to add the bromine to it. And you'll notice even after agitating, the red color persists. Again, in the test tube on the left, I have the alkene cyclohexene, and I'm going to add potassium permanganate solution to it. Potassium permanganate is an intense purple color. You will notice, however, that a reaction has clearly taken place. The color has transformed from violet to brown. In the test tube to the right, I have the cycloalkane cyclohexane, and I'm now adding potassium permanganate to it. And you will notice that even after agitation, the deep violet color persists. So again, on the left, is cyclohexene plus potassium permanganate, and on the right is cyclohexane plus potassium permanganate. This will end the videos for experiment 14.